Welcome back everyone to Real Americans, the people who make America work. I am sitting across from uh, a hell of a guy, first and foremost, one of my dear friends of all time. I've known him since, what, well, you're about two years old? That video was from two years old. Oh yeah, so yeah, probably. It was, from, it was from 94. Four. Like late 94, about to be 95. Five, so yeah, we've known each other for over. Couldn't even talk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, this is my dang good friend, Mason Marshall, and he is, you know what, I'll let him tell you what he does. Mason, enlighten the folks on what you do, man. I, uh, I am a oil field truck driver, um, kind of a local, local, uh, like hot shot driver, but in the, in the same sense, I do go to Texas, I go to Kansas, I go to, uh, New Mexico. Uh, it's not an over the road deal. I drive a day cab, so I'm inside the cab. It's like a single cab pickup, but with 18 wheels. So you're a truck driver. I'm a truck driver. You're a truck driver. Well, that's what that's what this show's about. We get we talk to people like you, man. We uh, we talk to the people who do the jobs that don't really get noticed. And one of my big goals has been to get a truck driver on here and let everyone know that. You guys are the, the people who make things go when we don't really know there should be going or how they go. And that's why I want to enlighten people on what exactly a truck driver does, the ins and outs, the days of truck driving. So how long have you been truck driving? I have been driving since uh, October of 2017, which I know it doesn't seem like much, but my my first job right out the chute, I was, a, uh, I was an over-the-road guy. I was hauling what they call mud it goes down into the hole whenever they're drilling with the rig it goes down in the hole and it basically creates a sleeve uh, and and it keeps the the density of the uh the mud um thick or thin it just kind of depends and that's in oil field sense right yes in, in oil field sense uh and over the road i was going to uh most of the lower 48, I was not allowed to go into Oregon or California mm -hmm. because of sm like smog laws. Yeah. <laughs> because I wasn't running a, a, a legal truck for California standards. Let's just put it that I way. I remember those Snapchat days when you'd put the post of stories, you'd be in like Utah or whenever, Montana. Whenever I was in South Dakota going through Mount Rushmore, truck and trailer, and I had the law following me. And they told me, they said, uh, you're lucky we don't arrest your butt. <laughs> <laughs> you just said, hey, I'm a newbie. I don't know what I'm doing. How did you get out well, of Well, uh, I told them that I didn't see the sign, and I really didn't. Uh, there's a sign at the very bottom of the mountain that says, no uh, truck and trailer allowed in Mount Rushmore inside the park. Uh, there's a, like a little horseshoe drive around in there, and you go through a gate. And uh, I was about two inches on both sides of my trailer tires, about from, from hitting the... The little the little lady's taking the money, and I felt terrible, but you know I wanted to see all the faces. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You were there. You might as well see it. Well, that's what that's what I think is cool about trucking. A lot of people don't understand that you go everywhere. I do. You don't just stay in Oklahoma where you're based out of right now. Right. You don't just go to Texas, the the round states. You go everywhere, yeah. and that's kind of what I want to uh, enlighten people on. Like, there's different kinds of trucking. There's not just like like you were mentioning on the road trucking, right? And then yeah. well, what now? What you do now versus there's certain levels. You have your over the road guys. You have your over the road van. You have your over the road uh, which is a box van, like Swift drivers, CR England. Which you're welcome that I don't work for Swift, and you know, like I told you earlier, Stevie Wonder's Institute for Trucking. So. Uh, you know, just about everyone kind of says something about Swift drivers, but they are essential. You know, and as much fun of them as we make, they still matter. Like, yeah. they still bring stuff to Walmart. They still bring water and toilet paper. Yeah, you respect them. And, and, yeah, I respect them, even though they're in the ditch 90% of the time. It's like the Army-Navy kind of yes. respect, right? Yes. Marines versus SEALs, that and then, whole thing. Yeah. And then you have other people. You have uh, flatbed drivers, and that's the flatbed is the, the tall, flat trailer and then you have the flatbed step deck which is the one that comes down to a lower point which you can haul taller things that's what most over the road heavy haul guys haul they 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 haul goods and crates for instance um another van company is old dominion you wouldn't know it but they they haul uh, probably shouldn't say this but they haul uh Sorry. like biodegradable stuff for the government really and every now and then you'll see an old dominion truck followed by two unmarked cars uh -huh. and then you'll see 
another four or five unmarked cars sitting on top of the overpasses miles down the road. Really? And you don't think about that. Like, I never thought about that until someone told me. Yeah, They're like, hey, did you see the, they said they'd come over to see me. They said, hey, did you just see the unmarked following the Old Dominion trucks? And the, the Old Dominions, they're, they're, they're doubles, and, and which means they're just, they just haul double trailers, which means you can haul more weight. And it's no big deal. Mm-hmm. It makes it legal. Gotcha. And then let's see here. You got flatbed. You have flatbed step deck. You have RGN. You have, uh, you have uh, tarp loads. All kinds of stuff. And what, what, and what would tarp loads be for the the layman, the people out there who don't know? Tarp what? loads. It would be uh, the times that you're going down the road and you see like a big blue tarp covering uh, some object on a flatbed trailer. Uh-huh. It's just so that that product doesn't get wet. So gotcha. it would be like a flatbed load of toilet paper you know you can't let that stuff get wet because then what are you gonna you know wipe with you know soggy tissue no that's that's right now people don't want that right now that's that's worse than single ply family dollar four for a dollar like that's terrible (laughs) now now you said you get you touch on a lot of places now you uh cattle hauling all that kind of falls under what that would be more agricultural but you can take like horse hauling i've got a buddy right now that's hauling horses from Oklahoma down to Fort Worth and from Fort Worth up to uh, Northern California Mm -hmm. and what he does is he goes down to Fort Worth picks up a load of uh, a head a couple head of horses and then he goes to New Mexico picks up a couple head more and by the end of his trip he's taken six head of horses to California in a one-ton truck which doesn't seem like much but one-ton trucks like the the dualies and stuff the the car haulers they're essential as well because I mean you couldn't get the new Corvette C8 from california to oklahoma if you didn't have car haulers and you know there's some some companies like reliable or pilot transport they they take these fancy cars from place to place and then like my buddy he takes horses from oklahoma texas mexico phoenix wherever on into california wow and uh like with the cattle hauling thing uh most of that's kind of local yeah but in the same sentence you know if Oklahoma, if OKC Stockyards is getting more price per pound, you're liable to get anywhere from Texas, Kansas, uh, Arkansas, uh, Georgia, Louisiana, all of them farmers that have good stock. Mm-hmm. They're, they're trying to send their stuff overnight like that. Yeah. Get as much money for their pound as you can. And, and they, they put water weight on them. But, you know. They're sweating it out on the trip anyway. Yeah, exactly. Most of the get... trips, most of these trips are taking place during the summer. So, and that's what a lot of people don't too understand is that while well, you see sometimes you see some semis hauling a little faster than usual, they're trying to hit times, hit quotas, and even cattle haulers, they'll be some coming from a long way because they don't want to lose out on that weight. Now, explain to people too, kind of like the system, how it works. Like when you pick up a load and you have a time frame to get there, just kind of explain to them what all that uh, entails. Well. For the cattle hauling thing, like I just touched on, you pick up, say you pick up in San Antonio, Texas, uh-huh. you have seven hours to get to Oklahoma City. It normally should take about six, five and a half hours, depending on traffic. But in San Antonio, well, I, I don't know. I'm just going to say six, six and a half, seven hours to get there. Mm-hmm. It could be more, it could be less. Around eight but um, as soon as you leave, your time starts then and there. Mm-hmm. So it depends on how many people pull out in front of you or wreck or wreck or don't yield on an on-ramp which you know just so you guys know um just because you use your blinker does not mean you have the right of way (laughs) i will run your ass over (laughs) that's a lot of people don't understand too like i was thinking about this driving out here how many times i saw semi trucks you know they pull out in front of me because they're trying to pass another semi i'm like thinking myself you know what it's their one opportunity they look behind me and then sometimes people pull out in front of you because they say, oh, yeah, there's 20 more cars. I don't have another shot to do this. Sorry, you're going to have to wait just a few seconds, and I'll get around them and then get over. A lot of people don't have that patience, and, you know, they only get mad at truck drivers. So, like, there's a lot of things that kind of I feel like truck drivers don't get enough respect to is that we're sharing the road, but you guys are it's a, you guys are the big That's big our life. Ho- Yeah, exactly. That is, your, the, that is the vein of your, to your heart is what it is. Think about it this way. Um, if I'm moving down the road at 73 miles an hour, a car cuts me off. I have to drop back down to 65. It takes me another 15, 20 seconds to get back up to even 70. Yeah. Um, you know, if 150 cars cut me off in one day, 
how much time do I lose? Yeah. You do the math there. I'm not, I'm just a truck driver, so exactly. I'm not going to do that math. No, it's a lot. It's but a lot. that, that stuff, it adds up over time. Yeah. So it, 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 if you get 150 in your first, uh, 11 and a half hours of driving, then you got, you still got another 150 to go. Mm-hmm. So it, it, it's just, don't pull out in front of trucks. <laughs> <laughs> well, PSA out there. Yeah. All right. Well, I was kind of thinking about this uh, when you were, we were talking earlier about some things. And, uh, you know, one of the reasons I wanted to bring you on here and ask you is like, what, what got you into truck driving? What, make, what, what, makes Mason, what made Mason Marshall go, hey, you know what, I'm going to do that? Because I know you've always been on the road a lot growing up, but like, what, what made you say, you know what, I can do that? Well, you know, whenever we was young, Dad always had panels, right? And, and we would take the one ton and we would haul panels. And I would see country that I never saw before in Oklahoma. Mm-hmm. And to me, that was just um, like my little portable office. That in my mind, my little portable offices would get to be get to see whatever I want to see. Mm-hmm. Um, whenever I was doing over the road, uh, I was taking stuff. Like I said, I went. To, I saw Mount Rushmore. I was in the middle of uh, Sturgis, you know, that like during the bike rally, you know, uh, just sights upon sights upon sights. And I, I mean, one of the most beautiful places is the Flaming Gorge. And I, I wish that I could go back there all the time and just coming straight down it, going over the going over the gorge, just absolutely beautiful it's just i'm making money while getting to see a bunch of neat things and uh to me doing that over well you know i went to college to be a a park manager uh it you know it's just a piece of paper you know saying i did it (laughs) in in three months i can make the same as 12 months yeah a, a yearly salary in three months yeah and and people are like yes i'm away from home but you know, I, like I've got Jax, my dog, so I take her with me. That's a little bit of company, you know. Um, but at the same same time, I get to see whatever I want to see. Yeah. Depending yeah. on depending on where the load goes, obviously. But you know, my boss would always ask me, "Hey, do you want to go to North Dakota this week? Hey, you want to go seventy miles from Canada this week?" And I'm like, uh, "Yeah, like send me. Let's go. What's my backhaul?" Yeah, we well, get to see you get to see you know. America, a lot of people from coast to coast don't ever ever leave their little bubble. And so that's what's interesting too about your job is that you're not stuck to just like this little bubble and like the way you think and all this stuff. You're you're exposed to a lot of how the country works. Yep. And that's what I think is really cool about truckers is that their job covers everything and you see everything and even to me, on, like, even on that time time limit you, yeah. you still get to see you get that. to see it and you get you get to experience different people and how they work and how their way of life like i was and talking to another tr- another trucker yeah he said i experienced california driving i had to take a load to the valley he goes and someone said hey i want to you want to take this load down there i'm like sure i'll do it that's not too bad he's like and then i drove through to Panga Canyon Boulevard, and I was like, oh, crap, and I'm pulling over and drop, dropping a load there, and then the cops are like, you can't park here. He's like, there's nowhere to park. So I think it's a, I think that's something that's so cool about your job is that you get to experience and see things that, I don't know, honestly, a lot of people see in movies or see on their Instagram filters or whatever, and you get to live it every day, and you get to see the beautiful skies when you're going down the road, and to me, I think that's that's a dang good benefit your job and a thing that a lot of people don't get to understand too is like i mean sometimes truckers aren't known to be the most cultured people you know and i think in my opinion that there's no better way to get cultured than going out and seeing it some people will sell their homes like i know people that have that have bought a semi and got a cdl and got their vin number or their dot number and everything got Mm -hmm. got on the load boards and they just sold their house bought a truck and that's all they do they keep everything in the truck. They just go. That's their life. And that's the same way with, like, people, you know, going place to place in an RV. Yeah. You know, it, it's 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 a lifestyle that some can, can take and uh, some are better off in, in an office. I understand that. I'm not saying anything negative exactly. about that. But, you know, um, like my niece, for example, could – she would – she – no, she wasn't made for trucking. We'll just put it that way. Yeah, she, yeah. she is better. In my opinion, she is better to go to her job and then do her thing at her job and then come come back home. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. No, there's not. I mean, for example, my sister. She lives less than a half a mile away from her office. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that's that's her thing. She still travels a lot yeah. with within her job, but yeah. you know, some people. 
that's just better for them. For me, I'm, I'm kind of a nomad. I like to wander. I have always loved driving. You like, yeah. you know, for for example, whenever I was 14, I was driving around on the motorcycle. Yeah. I was going out by Garrett's house and out out, you know, 40, 50 miles into the country, just yeah. riding down old county roads, just yeah. paved roads, just trying to. I remember you'd show up even in high school. You lived about like an hour away, and sometimes like on the weekends, <laughs> I, okay, like you text me, hey, you home? I see your truck there. I'm like, what? <laughs> and you're like, I'm just been driving out for the day. I was like. You've always had that kind of, you know. What about whenever we was real young, before licenses, before we were old enough to operate anything with a motor, I would try to come out here on my bicycle. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I lived, what, 12 miles away? No, not even, not 12, but, you know, about 10. Total, you eight. lived on the other side of town. Yeah, I lived on the other side of town. Like a, yeah. And I tried to drive a, a BMX bike out to your house. Yeah. So you, you, you were, in a way, you've been destined to kind of do a job like this. And that's what you just touched on, too, I think is pretty cool, is that, like, this is no way, shape, or form trying to say, like, any job's better than the other, but your job, just like you, know, you said your niece's job, all those jobs are so crucial to how our country works. And I feel like, you know, sometimes the jobs that aren't really jobs that, that most Americans do, the jobs of like being an influencer, being a celebrity, being an actor, being oh, a musician. I couldn't be, I couldn't be an, an influencer to save my life. <laughs> well, who am I gonna influence, you know? Yeah. like, uh, But no, you like you said, you know, uh, like Marley, she, she was meant to, to do what she's doing. She's, she's going up in, into Kansas and coaching, you know. And then uh, Courtney, she goes and she gets right of way easements. You know, dad does the same thing as Courtney, you know. Uh, I've always felt, like you said, I've always felt like this was more my speed. And it's not, it's not that I'm better than Courtney or Courtney's better than me or I'm better than Marley Marley's better than me. It's, it's my job is to take, right now, is to take frack equipment, two oil field locations so we can produce oil and then we can enter in the trade with Saudi Arabia. And that's crucial right now because right now we have crazy times going on in our country and then that also is too is like how is this affecting you right now? Like how, I mean you're obviously you're an essential business so we need truckers right now and that's another reason I want to bring you on. It's like you're still working throughout this. Has work been sparse? Yes, very. Um, Another thing just because you know it's 99 cents a gallon for gas like that's not good it might be fun but you're shutting down small towns if you think about it yeah you're shutting down small businesses you save you save 20 bucks in gas but yeah your mom and pop diner downtown is not going to be uh producing any revenue from that because now they're the economy's down now taxes are, are are doing what they're doing and you know we we can't make money doing that when you know especially right now with the covid yeah. it's like you know back whenever Mercer's was around, like, it'd be shut down right now because, you know, it's just too many people in one area, you know, and and then now it would be Mercer's would have to shut the doors. And then with them not bringing in any revenue, not a yearly salary, they get paid day by day, just like me. Day by day, people will not survive. And it sucks because there's nothing that we can do about that because, like, these companies that – like AT and T, you know, uh, whoever you got your loan from for your pickup, uh, whoever you got your loan from for your yeah. pickup, yeah. I got a loan. We still got to pay that. Yeah, exactly. It don't stop. It don't stop. Yeah. But guess what stops right now is our revenue, and that's the hard part too. And that's what you essentially are. Is that too? This is a better. You just kind of segued in something good too. It's like, how does, how does it work out? I know there's there are drivers who are salaried. But how does the compensation work out? You're like, you're technically an independent contractor in a way, right? In a way, yeah. Yeah. So explain, kind of explain to people that that that's like how exactly that all works. Like, how does it work? Like, you work for a trucking company. I work for a company, and they tell you your jobs and everything. But yeah, go ahead and just like kind of break okay, it down so, for everybody. Um, in in the trucking industry, you have some people make uh, cents per mile. Some people make percentage of the load. Uh, some people. Uh, make like a like an owner operator he will get all the money he'll he'll take a load for you know fifteen thousand to go from new york to uh houston and and he takes all that money in for me i get 25 percent of every load so every load that i don't catch i don't make money and right now if i'm only getting one load a day i'm i'm only making you know 25 percent of whatever the bill was and the bill has to be lower now because we're competing with everybody because everything's shutting down and it goes back to you know the small businesses you know like yes gas is 99 cents a gallon yes you're going to save 20 bucks for the next month two months whatever however long this lasts 
the mom and pop shop is going to shut down and then you're going to have to go where for food another half an hour down the road yeah you're going to save 20 bucks in gas yeah your town's going to shut down now you're going to have to be going and spending another 40 bucks in gas to get to a place an hour away you're going to have to spend that much more to go see a doctor in a bigger city than your local doctor it's just it's not good it's not good for the small town america especially and that's what i touched on in our podcast with jerry like there's there's so many small towns there's so many rural people out there that that a lot of people don't even understand like that commerce really is essential to and it's even it's even hurting our ag industry right now like it's hurting cattle sales right now like you your price per pound goes way down that's my dad he'll tell you every day (laughs) it's it's just crazy what all this has done to our country right now but what I think, too, has allowed a lot of people to see, and we touched on this in a conversation just the other day, is that it's allowing everyone to see, like, you know, we need to thank America first for the first time in a long time. Yes, exactly. It's, it's opening up everyone's mind to that, that whole thought process. That there been, is, like, like I was telling you about that, that thing that I saw, you know, there's been a man that once said, we need to close our borders. There has been a man that once said, we need to take care of America first. It all starts to make sense now, doesn't it? Yep. And not that bad just because he wears a wig. He's not that bad. <laughs> and he has a little spray tan. But by the way, we, since you're throwing that out there, got to say thank you to our UPS driver. He left these as a <laughs> gift the last time he was on the show. And me and Mason we were just wanting to have a few beverages. We were a little parched. We've been outside in the sun today. He was showing me how to truck and all the essentials of his business. And I was like, you know what? We should have a little beverage while we shoot this, sh- this show today. And, you know, I was like, oh, we got these koozies. Like, heck yeah, let's rep it. So <laughs> when you brought that up, I was like, that's a good time to mention a, a nice little gift we got from the UPS driver last time he's in, Jared, or Jared Sitton. Now, what do you think about like, all these people saying, you know, F Trump or oh, him, man. Like, for doing this or this or this? <laughs> I vote Hillary. You know, you know, that's that, in my opinion, that's their personal preference. But, you know, there was a time whenever the, whenever people weren't talking all this trash on. I mean, yeah, the Dixie Chicks they hated George Bush, but you know, uh, like there weren't riots in the streets about who's president. You know, mm-hmm. don't be butt hurt. Your feet don't don't hurt your feelings just because someone else voted for someone other than you. Yeah, and that's that's too kind of that's another reason. Like I do this show, I, I want people to understand. It's like, you know, uh, there's a lot of people who think uneducated people voted him in, voted his people in. And it's not an uneducated vote. It was not at all. It's, it's times like now kind of show exactly why this man got put in. I think it's uh, I think it's and I'm not sitting up here to tell you to tell people how to think politically or anything. No, uh-uh. But this is well, I, we're I, from I, small town America. Yeah. Ain't nobody you know needs to. It's not necessarily needs to listen to us, but you know <laughs> no one has to take our side. Like we've we've known that from day yeah. one. Yeah. In our class of what. Like, 30 something yeah like exactly there was no clicks there was no groups was- yeah, everyone had to get along with everybody and i think that's what's cool and especially you, you trucking me living out in california you know come back <laughs> i just think it's cool that you know we we understand like you know your your, your mom's half puerto rican you know mm-hmm. and i'm made up of a bunch of them i'm a high 57 <laughs> like you say you're a quarter porter like yeah. but you know like we're we, we were we've been experiencing you know allowed to understand diversity in our lives and understand how other people think too do we agree with how they think no but also that's all people understand is like do people dream of being truck drivers actually there's people who do dream of it a lot of it kind of gets ingrained in us early about about what our dreams but a lot of people think now like a lot of kids like oh i want to be this one because this was pushed in our face like no heck no because our country won't work if people all dream up to be influenced all dream up to be you know famous one day it's like we need we need this as a country. I think again, that's why this time is really. I think this crucial. is a really, really big reality check. It is. It's a huge reality check for our this country. Is a, this is an eye and opener for me because I have a bad spending habit of buying toys that I don't need. <laughs> you know? But you help the you help the whole trade market, the commerce, everything go because that's what America is built on too. And so, not to get too far, make this a political podcast, but I just wanted to, you know, it's it's a good way of kind of everyone understanding like your job is an essential job in America. There's a reason why you're still working right now. There's, there's a lot of truckers out there who are taking the stuff to Costco, who are taking the things, all these toilet paper, all the hand sanitizer, all this stuff that they're selling out of. There's got to be a new shipment come in the next day or two, and that's... By the way, the government just re- released this deal where they could drive past their time limit. Really? And so now these guys that are driving, like like for me, I don't have a time limit. I've been on location for three days straight. You know, that, you know sorry, government, but... Um, Sorry, boss, but you know, uh, like that's that's just how it is for the oil field. It doesn't stop, or, or it didn't well, stop. It didn't stop. But, <laughs> but uh, yeah, like I said, I've been on location working for three days straight. 
And there's guys that have certain time limits that they can run in a day. And it, it's technically it's 12 hours, but, um, but then they get to sleep for the rest of the, that time mm-hmm. or they, they take their 30 minute breaks. You know, I don't, I don't get a 30 minute break. I, I get, um, you know, I'm not I'm not mad because I got Subway, but I'll get half eaten Subway sandwich that the company man gave me. You know, like it, it's all right. It's food. It's whatever. I, you know, it, it's no big deal. But now these guys are getting a taste of this whole driving a little bit longer than you're supposed to. And there's a bunch of memes out there. I'm sure you've seen them, but it's just like you know, holding their eyes open with two picks and and just. <laughs> and I've actually noticed it going down the road in yeah. my personal view. No. I've seen it just in Weatherford the other day, right across the street from the, or right there at the point, I saw a semi almost go into the point, yeah. heading west. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, and I was. I, like, I saw so many semis cross. You know, they do it naturally anyway on a windy day, but it seemed like it was a windy day, and it was not a windy day on the oh, way out man. here. And if there's any truck drivers listening to this, I want to say something. If you drive in the middle of the road, you're more prone to getting accidents. There's a reason that right side, the right lane, the slow lane has that much more ditch. Just you know, hug the white line a little bit. The solid white one, not the checkered white line. Okay, that's my rant. Okay, so I have a few questions for you before we wrap up. Okay. First one is, for a trucker, if you, and I know you've already mentioned a few little things towards the common regular vehicle SUVs that are on the road. If you had one piece of advice or one thing you want them to know, what's one thing you would tell them? I want them to know two things. All right. Two things. Um... Pay attention to blinkers because that means we are turning. That doesn't mean you can pass us on the right or pass us on the left. Sometimes we need to be in the left lane to turn. Sometimes that that curb is going to get run over if we're not into the left lane. You know, just pause it for a minute. Just back off. You'll get to wherever you go. You'll get to Costco to get your toilet paper. You'll get to Family Dollar to get your toilet paper. It's not that big of a rush. And number two, the yield sign on the on-ramps. <laughs> That is for the on-ramp coming onto the interstate. I do not have to slow down. Yeah. If I slow down, it's like I touched at the beginning. <laughs> that takes another 30 seconds for me to speed back up. I have places to be. I know you probably got places to be too, but you will pass me in less than two seconds if you just wait. Hey, you're trying to make your time. You're trying to make your quota. You're, you're trying to make money is what you're trying to do. They're all oh, just I, trying to get, go spend their money. I've actually got one more thing, and okay. it's for DOT, DOT officers. It's about making the road safe. It's not about revenue. Mm-hmm. Thank you. All right, since you may, this may kind of flow into that too. If there's one thing you could change about truck driving, what's one thing you could change? Home life. Um, I would say home life because, like, there's only certain places that have a, a, a trucker's chapel. You know, I, I wish that I could get somewhere and, and study the Word of God, and I wish that I, I could have a little bit more time to be with my family and and my friends. Uh, you know, that's a, that's a demand 24-7. Um, you know, I, I, I wish there was a home life, but at the same time, there's money to be made. If you're going to get into trucking, there's money to be made. Yeah. But uh, I do wish there was more, more ways of of like a chapel other than other than listening. Some people don't. Some people don't uh, learn from listening. They learn from from being in there and seeing it face to face, seeing it with their own, like seeing it right in front of your face, reading it. Some people understand reading it rather than that. All right. Last question. Wrap up real quick. Ten seconds. Best part of being a truck driver? Scenery. Easily. Perfect. Beautiful. Mason, it's been a pleasure talking, brother. I love you, dog. Love, love you like you. a brother. Appreciate it. Hopefully, this has been super insightful for everyone. It has been for me. I've learned a lot. And thank you so much for taking time. Follow Mason on all his little social medias. I'm going to put down there at the bottom. He's a funny-ass follow on Snapchat, especially. <laughs> and his dog's awesome. All right. Thanks, Mason, again. This is Real Americans, the people who make America work.